In this learning from competition video, let's take a look at how my group did in the British Championships. In doing so, hopefully you'll be able to learn some technique tips and some ideas that will improve your jumping. On the way to the arena now, Paul's up first and then Ruby and Jahisha. First up to compete at the Birmingham National Indoor Arena was Paul in the men's long jump. <laughs> Paul has started his season with his longest ever opener of 7 meters 37 so we were hopeful that he could go better in Birmingham. Paul opened with a jump of 7 meters 21 which was a great start. From a technical point of view I can now see that he was a little bit too far back from the board on his takeoff. He should have been around about 220 and that looked like 240. So that resulted in some backward rotation and a lack of horizontal velocity across the board. Nevertheless, it was a good start. This was Paul's second attempt and unfortunately it was deemed a foul. Now I've frozen the jump on the penultimate step and we can see that he was closer to the board and this resulted in a better takeoff and more forward momentum across the board and indeed the jump was longer. This is Jack Roach who at the time needed to get a jump in to get through to the final eight and he did so with a jump of 7 meters 20. This is Jake Berkey jumping 7 meters 28 following up his 7 meters 34 he achieved in the second round. In the third round, Paul jumped 7.07, but you can see he was well before the board on this effort, so it looked like a longer jump was possible. From a technical point of view, on this effort, he opened out his foreleg and his sweep into the hitch kick too soon, so this is going to slow momentum down. You need to punch the takeoff more and keep the foreleg of the swing leg tucked in for longer. Next up, Dominic Ogbici jumped 7 meters 16, but unfortunately it wasn't enough to make the cut to the final eight. Jack Roach was struggling a little bit and only jumped 7 meters 14 on this effort, despite leading the UK rankings with a 7.66. On his fourth attempt, Paul jumped 7 meters 16, and it does look technically better in that he held his drive for longer. So why didn't he jump so far? Well, there are a number of factors. Potentially his speed through the board and takeoff wasn't quite as effective as it looked. And it did look a little bit more vertical and looped rather than very fast into the takeoff. Scotland's Alan Hamilton, who jumped 7.41 in round two, was suffering from cramp and ran through on this effort. Samuel Kakali, who was winning the competition with 7 meters 54 and a backup 7.52, fouled this long attempt. In the fifth round, another Scot, Alessandro Shanini, jumped 7 metres 21, backing up the 7.31 he'd recorded previously. Jake Berkey also jumped 7.21, and this was the sixth time that distance was recorded in the competition, which must be, potentially, a bit of a record. Murray Fotherington jumped 7 metres 16, following up on his 7 metres 36 he'd jumped earlier. Into the sixth round, Jack Roach jumped 7 meters 41, which would eventually place him fourth in the competition. Paul's last jump was the same as he started with, and you guessed it, 7 meters 21. I don't film all jumps as I like to watch with my own eyes, and unfortunately, I missed Paul's longest jump on video when he jumped 737 in the fifth round. Murray Fotherington caught his last jump going out to 7 meters 46 which would be good enough for the silver medal. He set the jump up particularly well and his technique which is very good took him forwards and outwards off of the board. With the last jump of the competition Samuel Kagali knew that he'd won with an indoor PB of 7 meters 54 and ran through on this aborted attempt. Here are the results and then you can see the full scorecard. It was a bit of a low key British Championships and usually we get jumps closer to the 8 metre mark in the 770s and 780s. 
So our guys have got to press on and start to jump those distances in the outdoor season and across future years. And we need faster sprinters coming into the event as you're going to be limited in the amount of distance you can achieve if you can't run circa 10.6. It's a very different scenario in the women's long jump where we've got three to four women who are world class. Jahisha Thomas and Ruby Yerges from my group were competing in this event. Ruby was only 17 at the time and she was selected on the basis of a 609 jump in the under 20 championships a couple of weeks previously. Not overawed by the situation, Ruby opened with her second longest jump ever of 5 meters 93. Ruby got a good takeoff and held her drive position, but maybe didn't get the best leg shoot that she could have. Following up, Jahisha opened with a very solid 6 meters 39, which took her into the lead at the time. This was one of the better technical jumps that Jahisha has completed, with a good takeoff drive, good mid-air position, and a relatively straight and not twisting landing. So that was positive. Unfortunately, Ruby fouled a long jump in round two, and as is often the case with fouls, the technical execution was better. She went across the board quicker, got a good knee drive, held her position and her speed, took her out to a jump probably around about the 6.20 mark, albeit it won't count. But hopefully she'll achieve that and more in the outdoor season. Following up in round two, Jahisha went out to a jump of 6.43. Unfortunately, the rotation returned to a greater extent on the landing and this is losing distance. However, the takeoff drive and, as before, the positions in the hitch kick until the midpoint are really strong, so it won't be long before that landing position is conquered. Unfortunately, in round three, Ruby fouled again. She was in the right position just about to take off at 2 meters 10, 2 meters 20, so it was just a minor foul, but she'll be back in the summer. Following up in round three, Jahisha jumped 6.35, showing good consistency. Here's 6.80 plus jumper Abigail Irizuru jumping 6 meters 37, which was her best effort in the competition. Unfortunately, Jahisha fouled her fourth round effort. 6.90 jumper Jasmine Sawyers wasn't quite getting into the right takeoff positions and she fouled a jump in round four and then in round five jumped her longest jump of the day of 6 meters 42. Jahisha finished her competition with 6 meters 36 and this was good enough for the silver medal position behind Lorraine Ugin who jumped 6 meters 75. As before, here are the results and in a few seconds you'll see the full scorecard. British women's long jumping is in great health and it's going to be very tough for the girls and women wanting to qualify for the World Juniors and the various senior competitions that are going ahead this year. However, because of that competitiveness, there's going to be some long jumps. And to complete a successful weekend for the training group, Jay was competing in Ireland in the Irish Championships and despite a bit of a ropey jump, jumped a personal best of 14 metres 86. So for him, 15 metres plus should be around the corner very soon. Hopefully this review of the British Championships and how our group got on will give you some ideas as how to improve your jumping. Do subscribe to the channel and leave any comments you may have in the section below or through my other social media. And good luck with any competitions you may have and of course your training. Do consider becoming a channel member. For coach athlete members I post an exclusive video every month and we delve deeper into the subject matter that will improve you as a coach or an athlete.